Hello, and welcome again to Living English, where we learn how to speak English for work, travel, or study. In each program, we look at a short drama, then practice our English. So let's see today's episode of Sisters and Brothers. Remember, in the last episode, Anne arrived from Singapore. She met her business partner, Sarah. Now, she's checking in at her hotel. Thank you very much for picking me up. You're very welcome. You'll be all right here? Mm, thanks, I'll be fine. And thank you, Mark, for helping with my heavy bag. Oh, don't mention it. All right, then. Nice to meet you, finally. I'll ring you tomorrow. Nice to meet you, too. Goodbye. Good morning. Would you like to check in? Yes, please. And your name? Anne Lee. Uh, yes. Could you just fill this out, please? How long will you be staying? Two weeks. Are you here on business? Mainly business. Will you need a hire car? No, thank you. And will you need a map of the city? Uh, maybe later. And will you want a newspaper in the morning? No, thank you. Okay. And how will you be paying Ms Lee? Credit card. Thank you. There you go. And here's your key. It's room 309. Enjoy your stay, Ms Lee. Thank you. I hope I will. In that episode, we saw how to say thank you and how to reply. Let's have another look. Thank you very much for picking me up. You're very welcome. Anne says thank you very much. This is a polite way of thanking someone. Try saying, thank you very much for picking me up, with the clip. You're very welcome. Thank you very much for picking me up. You're very welcome. Sarah says in reply, you're very welcome. This is a polite reply. Try at home with the clip. Thank you very much for picking me up. Thank you very much for picking me up. You're very welcome. You're very welcome, or just you're welcome, is what we usually say when someone thanks us. Your is short for you are. You are welcome. Now listen for how Anne says thank you to Mark. And thank you, Mark, for helping with my heavy bag. Oh. She just says thank you. There's another way of saying thank you for everyday things. Listen carefully. You'll be all right here? Mm, thanks, I'll be fine. Anne said thanks to a polite question. For small things like this, we just say thanks. In our next clip, listen for what Mark replies when Anne says thank you. And thank you, Mark, for helping with my heavy bag. Oh, don't mention it. Mark says don't mention it. He's politely saying that Anne doesn't need to say thank you. Don't is a way of saying do not, and mention means say. Now try saying it yourself. And thank you, Mark, for helping with my heavy bag. Oh. And thank you, Mark, for helping with my heavy bag. Oh. Don't mention it. In that episode, we also saw how to say goodbye. Nice to meet you too. Goodbye. She says goodbye as she leaves. It's a formal way of saying that you are going. Practice saying goodbye with the clip. Nice to meet you too. Nice to meet you too. Goodbye. 
When you get to know someone a little better, you can say, see you later. Practice saying this after me. See you later. See you later. Now, let's look at how to ask questions about what you're going to do. How long will you be staying? Two weeks. How long will you be staying? We use the word will to ask about the future. Now listen to another question that uses will to ask about the future. Listen carefully. The hotel clerk speaks very fast. And when you want a newspaper in the morning. Here's another question from the clerk. And will you need a map of the city? And here's another one. Will you need a hire car? All these questions are about what Anne will do in the future. They ask about her plans. They ask about what she intends to do or what she is going to do. For example, the question, will you need a hire car, is asking about the future, about what Anne might need in the next few days. Now listen carefully in our next clip for another use of will to ask about the future. Thank you very much for picking me up. You're very welcome. You'll be all right here? Will you be all right here? Sarah wants to know how Anne will be in the next few days while she is staying at the hotel. In the next clip, see how the word will is used when you are not asking a question. And here's your key. That's room 309. Enjoy your stay, Ms Lee. Thank you. I hope I will. Anne replies, I hope I will, to the clerk telling her to enjoy her stay at the hotel. She hopes that in the future she will enjoy staying at the hotel. If you are not asking a question, you use the word will after words such as she. She will need a hire car. I. I will need a hire car. And you. You will need a hire car. These sorts of words, I, she, you, are called pronouns. We use will before pronouns in questions. So if I say, will you need a hire car, it's a question. Listen to the difference. Will you need a hire car? You will need a hire car. Can you tell which one of these is a question? Will you enjoy your stay? Or, you will enjoy your stay. Will comes before you, so will you enjoy your stay is a question. It's asking about something in the future. When will comes after you, you are just saying what you think is going to happen. You will enjoy your stay. And here is Michelle. Hello, Michelle. How are you? I'm fine, thanks, Brenton. Hello, everyone. What will we talk about today? We'll talk about how to pay for things and more about the word will. Now, Brenton, you're going on a holiday to Fiji. I am? Let's pretend. I've brought some things here. Ask me if you'll need them and you ask at home too using will I need. Remember, it's hot in Fiji and there's lots of beaches. All right. Sunscreen. Will I need sunscreen? What do you think? Yes, you will. Traveller's checks. Will I need traveller's checks? Yes, you will. Sunglasses. Will I need sunglasses? Yes, you will. Teddy bear. Will I need a teddy bear? 
No, you won't. I might. Now you answer the questions. Will he need sunscreen? Yes, he will. Will he need sunglasses? Yes, he will. Will he need a teddy bear? No, he won't. Oh. <laughs> now, let's look at the scene where Anne pays for her hotel room. How does she pay? And how are you be paying, Ms Lee? Credit card. Anne pays by credit card. How else can you pay for things? Well, you can pay in cash. So we say you pay by credit card or in cash. How else can you pay? Well, you can often pay by EFTPOS. EFTPOS stands for Electronic Funds Transfer at Point of Sale. You use your ATM card for this. And you can pay by cheque. In America, it's spelled differently. So we say you can pay in cash, by credit card, by EFTPOS, or by cheque. Practice saying by credit card with the clip. And how are you be paying, Ms. Lee? And how are you be paying, Ms. Lee? Credit card. Did you hear what the clerk called Anne Lee in that clip? Listen again. And how are you be paying, Ms. Lee? Credit card. She used her formal title, Ms. Lee. What's your formal title, Brenton? My formal title is Mr. Whittle. Men are called Mr. We say Mr. before our last name. My full name is Brenton Whittle, so I'm Mr. Whittle. So the Mark Taylor in our film is Mr. Taylor. Yes. And are you Ms. Croden? I might be. I might not be. What do you mean? Women can be called Ms, Miss or Mrs. Well, they all sound like each other. Yes, but they're different. You can only be called Miss if you're not married and Mrs if you are married. Are you a Miss or a Mrs? I like to be called Ms. Any woman can be called Ms, just like any man can be called Mr. Practice these after me. Mr. Whittle. Mrs. Taylor. Miss Taylor. Ms. Lee. Have a go at saying Ms. Lee with the clip. And how are you be paying, Ms. Lee? Now it's time for a memory test. How are you going to pay? By credit card, by cheque, in cash. And I hope you'll watch our next program. We'll find out how to make appointments and about words to do with time. So until then, see you later.